Okay, welcome back. This is the third lecture of Introduction to Stable Homotopy Theory. And uh, uh, I have uh, some, some price to pay, I think, left over from last time. So let me write it down. That is the following theorem. It says that if K is a Kahn complex, sorry, if X is a Kahn complex, I think I used X this time, uh, the map X goes to sing of the geometricalization of X um, is a weak equivalence. Sorry, it's a homotopy equivalence. And actually, this is probably a bit too thick. Yeah, much better. Uh, this map I called eta, I think. And just to recall you, this map is just sending uh, a simplicious sigma here to the inclusion. And not, it's not the inclusion, but I mean the, the quotient of the inclusion. This is just the the, 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 the inclusion of the uh, scene as delta times the singleton of sigma. And to prove that, I will use a theorem, a simplicial approximation theorem, uh, which I want to prove today. Uh, the proof will be in the notes. It's not there yet, but hopefully it will reach there before the end of this afternoon. Uh, so the theorem is the following. There are many ways of doing the simplicial approximation theorem. This for now uh, will be this. So let S be a simplicial set. Um, S prime. I'm actually doing. Yeah, I mean, sorry. Uh, T is a, a subset, a simplicial subset, and X a Kahn complex. And suppose you have a map, continuous map, between the geometric realizations. Such that uh, the restriction to the geometric realization of T, which is a subspace of the geometric realization of S, is the geometric realization of G, for G some simplicial map. So I have a continuous map between geometric realizations that comes from a simplicial map on some subset. And therefore there exists F prime and H homotopy between F and F prime relative to the geometric realization of T. So F prime restricted to the geometric realization of T is Geometricalization of G again. And uh, G prime from S to X, a simplicial map, as a map of simplicial sets, such that G prime restricted to T is G, and the geometricalization of G prime is F prime. And these uses essentially a text is a Kahn complex. If you've seen similar theorems in the past called simplicial approximations, this shouldn't be a terrible, uh, a terrible surprise. Uh, typically, they're stated in terms that there exists a subdivision of S, as I said, that's a simplicial map. If you've seen a member centric subdivision, and in fact, that's actually the theorem that you usually prove, and then use the Kahn complex property to pass from the subdivision to an actual map. But the details will be in the notes if you're curious. Are there uh, questions about this theorem? No. Okay, because we are going to use it. Uh, it's very big, the statement. So, okay. Proof of, well, let's say theorem one. Let's call this theorem one. So, uh, 
it's not, it doesn't look like the, the proof of the previous theorem, which I'm not going to give. Uh, so remember, we have this map from eta to x, uh, sing of the geometric realization of x. And the trick is consider the geometric realization of eta. And this is a map like this. And it comes with this epsilon map, this co-unit applied at the geometricalization of X. Now this, uh, goes like this, and if you remember, epsilon of Y from the geometricalization of sing Y to Y is just the map sending uh, a point here, which is T sigma from uh, sorry t in delta m sigma from the topological and simplex into y to sigma of t this was the co-unit of the adjunction i think i discussed it briefly last time and if you look at them in this case you get exactly the identity this is one of the triangular identities of the adjunction so, okay, moreover, eta is the inclusion of a simplicial subset. Sorry, which is the geometric realization of the X. So we have a map. So eta geometric realization of X satisfies the hypothesis of the simplicial approximation theorem. Ah. So we have a, a continuous map when restricted to a simplicial subset, this image of eta is is a simplicial map. In fact, it's the identity in this case. So the trick is we want to use the simplicial approximation theorem to get an, a simplicial retraction of this eta. So what does it say? It says that there exists some G from sing geometric position of X to X such that uh, and sorry, and a homotopy, the geometric realization of G with eta of X uh, relative to this guy, and such that uh, G composed with eta is just uh, the identity. Right, it's clear so far, okay, very good. But now the trick is that we are basically done. Uh, this seems like magic, but what is this H? H, remember, is a map from zero one into the geometric realization of X. And well, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I spell it out, but the interval zero one is of course just the geometricalization of the one simplex. And so this is just the geometricalization of sing times delta one by the theorem that we saw that geometricalization commutes with finite products. And, uh, and so by a junction, I can find H tilde to C X. This is just the fact that seeing and geometricalization and junction. 
And in fact, this is our deformation retraction. If you look at what the conditions are saying, well, this is saying that H tilde restricted to sing X, sorry, to, 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 to X uh, times uh, delta one is just X times delta one X eta. So this is, uh, let's say, this is this condition star. When you wrap what it means under the, the equivalence. Sorry, uh, that's the condition that is a homotopy relative to the geometric condition of X. So this homotopy is also relative to to, X, to the subcomplex X. And uh, then we have. Uh, H tilde restricted to sing x times one is just the identity. This is what it means that H uh, when restricted to, to, to the one component is just uh, epsilon. This is this fact. And, oh, I ran out of space, but I don't go to the 20 page here. Uh, ah, I made a mistake. Okay, next page, I'm going to make an infinite page. Sorry, I promised I would do that, but I forgot to do it for the first page. Uh, so, okay. Uh, okay, let me just write here. The other condition is that X restricted to sing the geometricization of X times zero is exactly uh, is this composition here. I'm going to say, oh yeah, G, X, eta. So this is saying that eta is a deformation retraction and in particular a homotopy equivalence as it was promised. So yeah, we have three we have three properties, if you want. Uh, H at, it starts from the geometricization of G. H start, uh, H lands at eta of the geometricization of X, and it's relative to the the geometricization of X. And when you translate them under the adjunction, it tells you exactly that this H tilde is a gives you a deformation retraction. So this concludes the proof. And I'm sorry, I forgot the infinite scrolling. I'll fix it for the next page. Um, are there questions about this? No. Okay. Let me. infinite scrolling. They never get the dimension of the page right. Okay. Okay. Let me pause one second because now we change topic. This is the end of simplicial homotopy theory. Oh, well, okay. That's the end of what I want to do about simplicial homotopy theory. Of course, you can do much more stuff. Uh, and now, the next topic is homotopy coherent diagrams. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me give a definition to start with. C 
Um, let me put a C on the line. I use uh, math RM in, uh, sorry, math BF in, in the tech file, but uh, I cannot really do black and uh, do bold characters by hand. So I'm going just to put an underline between it. So it's a simplicial category. If it is a category, enriched in simplicial sets. This is a slight abuse of notation, but it's very common in the literature, so um, I'll, I'll keep it. And it's also shorter than saying simplicially enriched category. Um, concretely, this is the datum of a set of C and the line of objects. And for every two objects in the set, a simplicial set, we can write map C on the line X comma Y. And uh, for any X, Y, Z, a composition map, which is a simplicial map like this. Uh, plus, uh, okay, for every X actually a um, zero simplex from the point in this mapping space. Uh, plus compatibilities, which you can probably guess on your own. It's just associativity and unitality of the composition. They are just, if you want, you can see these as a map from delta zero. To map C on the line. Oh, X. No one corrected me, but of course the identity goes from X to X. Uh, so you can see that. And then you can write all the nice diagrams. Small question. Yes. Is it important that the objects form a set? No. I am staying well uh, in, in the interest of limiting, uh, in the interest of limiting. Technicalities, I'm staying well away of size issues. Yeah, you okay. are right. You should uh, you should pay attention to size issues and etc. But I I think if I if I did that properly, we'll never we'll never be done with this. No so, problem. Thank you. Yeah. So actually, in fact, we then I will soon give examples where the objects do not form a set. Um, they form a proper class, but. I'm kind of playing fast and loose with set theory here. And I, I will say C is a can enriched category. If it is a simplicial category. Well, map c underline x comma y is a can complex for every x y in of c underline and in fact we are interested mainly in can enriched categories but it will be convenient that we have more general simplicial categories in, in the discussion so just a little bit of terminology we're going to Take the elements, elements of, of C underline will be called objects of C underline. The zero simplices of map C underline x comma one. So here uh, will be called maps or morphisms Oof, 
and I'll often write stuff like f goes from x to y. And uh, the one simplices, uh, now cx from so here uh, will be called homotopies between maps. Sometimes so this will make more sense when it's a canarist category, in fact, when maps. Where, where homotopies have inverses and etc. So there are literally paths if you want in these mapping spaces and sometimes write stuff like these. Okay. Uh, so they, why are we why are we giving this definition? Well, we want to do homotopy theory, right? I mean that's our goal, and we want a, a setting where we don't don't only have objects and morphisms, we also have homotopies between morphisms and actually higher homotopies that will be important to, to write down the proper diagrams. And uh, yeah, and that's our first approximation, kind of reached categories, first approximation. Yes, Benjamin, you raised your hand. Uh, maybe you want to put your hand down. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, but uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to give examples now, but is the definition clear and the intuition behind the definition clear? So let me do examples. So first we can take top underline. So it's the category whose objects uh, uh, let's say compactly generated topological spaces and morphisms and, and, and map top underline x comma y is the can complex that we discussed before is the can complex of maps. Uh, from X to Y. So map morphisms are actually maps of topological spaces. Uh, so again, see, remember the N simplices were just continuous maps like this. Uh, homotopies are well, actually homotopies and higher homotopies are, well, the, the reasonable definition of higher homotopies. That's one example. Another very important example that will actually be our main interest is this can underline. So it's the, the, the simplicial category whose objects are can complexes and map can x comma y is just this. Can complex here that we proved it was a can complex last time. So sorry, maybe I should say use the other brackets here because I mean just the set of some objects. But okay, these are two important examples. But you can play uh, you can play more fun games. You can. Um, for example, take man whose objects are, say, smooth manifolds and map man uh, uh, m comma n is just the kind complex of embeddings that we gave as an example some time ago. It still makes sense. Uh, and you can play this game many, many times. And you, you hopefully you see how, how these things are given. Uh, you can actually do, oh, let me give a, a slightly trickier example. Let me give chain complexes over R when R is a ring. I forgot to discuss it, but there exists a 
complex called home underline. So our objects are chain complexes. And uh, is, I forgot to define it actually, but uh, there is a can complex whose um, zero simplices are just chain maps. Uh, one simplices are chain homotopies. Uh, no, sorry, shift, shift is here, etc. Uh, let me not write down the precise definition of the higher homotopies, but you can actually do that using something called the Doldkahn correspondence. So every time you have actually a notion of homotopy, you, there is such a gadget uh, uh, hanging behind the scenes. So. Uh, I have a quick question about the first example. Yes. Is the, um, the, the complex you wrote down the same thing, probably a thing of the mapping space? No, that's only when X and Y have the homotopy type of a, con com of a CW complex. OK. In general, this guy sees more. Um, if you remember, last, uh, last semester, we saw an example of a map of topological spaces who was a weak equivalence, but not a homotopy equivalence, the map from the Polish circle. And that, for example, will be a counterexample uh, to this. Uh, if you restrict, in fact, what's true, if you restrict it to the subcategory of this top underline spanned by all objects that are homotopy equivalent to a CW complex, you get a category that's equivalent to CAN. But it's, uh, it's but in general, top and the line can have more stuff. Um, in fact, you, you can think of these as the category of homotopy types. And here, and these as weak homotopy types. And in fact, the weak homotopy types are actually more interesting on some level and more fundamental. Uh, but of course, sometimes you're just interested in studying homotopy types, and there is a whole branch of geometric topology actually dealing with this stuff. But unfortunately, I don't think we'll have time to, to delve into this. OK. So OK. OK. Um, yeah, OK. Our goal now is we have such C on the line. Uh, a canon rich category, we want to define what uh, a homotopy coherent diagram. So if you recall from last semester, uh, for those who were there in Algebraic Topology 2, and if you weren't, well, let's show you this example for the first time. Uh, we had um, uh, a coherent square. It was just a square of topological spaces. So F, F prime, G, G prime, uh, plus a homotopy H from G prime F to F prime G. And these were actually important in defining homotopy pullbacks and push out and stating Blaker's messy and all of those interesting uh, theorems. And well, I mean, first of all, uh, we can actually do this definition in any kind of rich category now. If you look everything that is there, it's already in our definition. But that's not the definition of coherent square I want to give. It's going to be an essentially equivalent definition, but not quite, because we want to give a definition that generalizes to arbitrarily shaped diagrams, uh, which will require uh, to remember some more information, even if it's a contractible amount of information. So it's more of combinatorial uh, gadget, but okay. But we want something like this. And 
to first, uh, we will start, I'll start with very small diagrams and we'll see what a reasonable definition of these objects are. So from now on, uh, we have, we fix a can enriched category. C underline, and we want to, to oh, and uh, I, sorry, I, uh, let's say a category, and we want to guess a reasonable notion of uh, I shaped coherent diagrams. Okay, and we'll see a bunch of examples and uh, they will become more and more complex as time goes on. And then I'll give the de general definition. And uh, well, you should stop me at any point in which this doesn't become, it becomes not intuitive, what am I doing? But it is clear what a coherent diagram should be, right? It's a diagram together with a bunch of homotopies uh, that tells you that the diagram is maybe not commutative on the nose, but it's commutative after those homotopies that they give you. And maybe some homotopies for, for these more complicated diagrams will have to be compatible in some way, introducing even higher homotopies and so on and so forth. But okay, let's start simple. Let's start with I is just the one point category. Okay, not much to be said. So a coherent diagram should be just an object. And let me call it X zero here. Uh, at some point, I'll probably stop putting the ob in front of C underline. And I mean that something is in C underline, I mean, it's an object. I'll, I'm trying to be pedantic for this first time I'm introducing these ideas, but uh, no, people don't write ob like in 99% of the literature, so. Okay, so this was easy. There is no compatibilities. And let's see another easy example. I is, so this is also the poset brackets zero. I is the poset brackets one, which is just two objects. And here again, you don't see any non-trivial composition, so there shouldn't be any coherence. So a coherent diagram should be just two objects, x0, x1, and an arrow, uh, f in map, x, comma, y. And already let me not spell out that I mean a zero simplex in this, simply in this kind of complex. Okay. So far, so good. I don't expect any surprise from you so far, but if there are, please interrupt me. Uh, let's try to see something fancier. So we have a poset, a more complicated poset. We have a non-trivial composition. This is the smallest possible category. Uh, sorry, not the smallest, but the simplest possible category with a non-trivial composition. Oh, sorry, the arrow, let me call it F01, just for the sake of, of consistent notation. So, okay, uh, well, here we expect something. So a coherent diagram here should be three objects, x0, x1, x2, three arrows, F, uh, F01 from X0 to X1, F12 from X1 to X2, and F02 from X0 to X2. And if it were just a diagram, I would ask that F02 is the composition of F0, uh, F12 and F01, but that's not. And then we get a homotopy that I'm going to call F012, which is a homotopy from F02 
to F0, uh, F1, two composed F01. And this is part of the data of the diagram. The homotopy is not, I'm not saying that exists a homotopy, I'm saying to give the diagram, I also have to give you the homotopy. Because if you remember last semester, uh, the choice of the homotopy actually was important for the identification of the homotopy limit and co-limit. So you cannot just uh, not give. The diagram will have this, this, this information also. Okay. Questions so far? This should be all reasonable. And now let's go for a slightly more complicated example, still not very complicated, but so this is this poset here. Now we are going to have some non-trivial associativity conditions. So I'm trying to write all non-identity arrows in this category. So again, what should be a coherent diagram? Well, we have x0, x1, x2, x3 objects. Uh, sorry, in C underline. And uh, we should have also arrows f0 well okay let me just write fij from xi to xj arrow for every i less than j and actually if you want to be super pedantic i should also give all the fii arrows but of course then we will also force them to be the identity so i'm not going to be pedantic and ignore uh, ignore those arrows which are trivialized by the relation and okay, and we should also have Fijk by the previous discussion, which is a homotopy from Fik and Fjk composed with Fij for every i less than j less than k. Want to witness this composition, but that's not enough. You might naively think, oh, that's all we need, but Actually, let's take a look. At map from X zero to X three. What's happening here? We have four possible maps. We have F zero three. Yeah. Or we can go through one, uh, sorry, F13 composed F01. We can go through two, F23 composed F02. And we can go through one and two. And we have homotopies F013, F0. Two, three. And here, for example, we have F one, two, three composed F zero one and F uh, two. Ah, sorry. Okay. F two, three composed F zero one, two. We have these four paths in this mapping space. And really here, I mean, uh, the, the degenerate, the composition is given by the degenerate, but I'm not going, I'm, I'm going to start denote the degenerate and simplices with the same letter as the, the corresponding point, the corresponding zero simplex, because otherwise we will never uh, keep track. Okay, so this gives a map from the boundary of delta one times delta one into maps x zero, x three. In some sense, if you think about it, this triple composition and this single way have two possible ways of being homotopy. Have the way that passes through one and the way that passes through two. But why should there be two ways? 
uh, there should be only one way. And so we fill in this square and think of it as giving a homotopy between these two paths. So we give an extension of this map that I'm going to call F0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, this example is crucial, actually. So let me give you some time to digest it. This is also this also should be part of the diagram. I have a quick question. Um, in keeping with this philosophy, shouldn't one also only give a morph for the identity a morphism? together with a homotopy to the identity instead yes. of... Um... Yes, but it turns out when you actually write down all the compatibilities, which we will do in a second, this forces the morphism to be the identity and the homotopy to be the degenerate homotopy. So uh, I'm, I'm going to sort of ignore this issue for now, because, uh, but you're right. I mean, if you want to be maximally weak, you have to do that. But if you want to... to write down. Uh, this, this phenomenon goes under the name, like something like weak units can be strictified. It's the uh, weak composition cannot. Um, so we have to keep in mind these things. OK. Thanks. OK. And by the way, let me actually try to find a better description for this example. What is this delta one times delta one? Uh, we can think it's a, it's a poset whose objects are the ways of going from zero to three. One is poset of paths from zero to three uh, under refinement. The more stops you do, the finer is your, your path. And the way of saying it is that this is just the nerve of the subsets of 0, 3, such that 0 and 3 are in A. And in fact, that's how I'm labeling the vertices. It's like 0, 3, 0, 2, 3. 0, 1, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And the map, is, the, 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 the poset is inclusion. OK. It's just a more conceptual way of saying what we, we did. And OK, so let me actually go on the deep end and define what it is for the poset with an n-fold composition. And then I'm going to give you the definition and we will discuss it a little bit, but hopefully it should be clear from this previous example why this is the unreasonable thing to do. So this is the datum of n plus one objects and see on the line. And for every i less than j, I can consider this simplicial set Pij, which is the nerve i i plus one j minus one j such that i and j are in A, which I think are the full set of paths from i to j. And 
Uh, and then I have to give a map, which let me call it F I J with capital F from these two maps, X I X J. Uh, but that we need to be compatible with the composition. We need somehow to say that the vertices and homotopies are built out of the composition. So there's going to be a compatibility here. And the compatibility is that so for every i less than j less than k, p i j k sorry, pij times pjk go to maps xi, xj times maps xj, xk. This goes to maps pik, maps xi, xk, like this. And so this is fij times fjk is f i k and so this is the composition and this is a map that I also denote with composition no maybe it should denote like as a union this is sending a here and b here to a union b so it takes a path that goes from i to j a path that goes from j to k and takes the union and of course what I'm saying it's a map of posets this union is a map of posets and I'm taking the induced map by the nerve And, oh, and of course, this condition needs to commute. And as Benjamin was noticing, yeah, you also need uh, a condition that FII from the point to map XI, XI is in fact is the identity of XI. That's, uh, well, this is just PII, if you want. Okay, so these pij are like big cubes that tells you that, and these are the point is that these are weakly contractible. So the geometricalization of pij is in fact you can verify zero one to the uh, what's the dimension j minus i minus one, I believe. It's some kind of cube. Yeah. Because as a, as a poset, in fact, this is just i to uh, brackets one, g minus i minus one. And this is just identifying a subset with its characteristic function. But the point is that they are contractible. So in some sense, maps out of these don't contain any homotopical information. They're telling you that up to homotopy, all these things are the same. But we are remembering the homotopies. Okay. Is this definition clear? Are there questions about it? I'm going to rewrite this definition in a different way in one second, but. Before I do that, I want to be sure that everyone is on board with the current version. Okay. Hopefully this hasn't been too surprising to notice that this looks like a functor, this thing I just described. So in order to do that, let me define this Cn. This is a simplicial category. It's not going to be a common rich category. This is going to be a simplicial category whose object uh, uh, zero 
n and such that map i j in c brackets n is this poset p i j. Uh, I actually define it only when i is less or equal than j, but the definition works also when i is is greater than j. This is just empty. Uh, if you if you look for uh, you can either declare it or or formally look at the definition. There are no ways of going from i to j if i, if I is greater than j. And composition is given by the union, or if you want, the, the map induced on the nerves by the union. And the identity is, of course, the only thing it can be the identity. So map I, I is just a singleton of the set I, and well, okay, and that's also the identity of I. Okay, cool stuff. And now, then, a homotopy coherent diagram. from M to C underline is the same thing as a simplicial factor. C brackets N to C. Okay, are we good? Now, we could actually go on and define this C. I, mean, I, yeah. I would have a question actually. Yeah, so, sure. um, is there any, any way to, to easily, easily give such a functor if you start with an arbitrary infinity category? So if we, what we're doing here is somehow to I mean, I haven't diagram. defined an infinity category yet. Um, okay, so we will see that later on how to... I mean, we will see hopefully within the next 15 minutes what an infinity okay, category sorry. is. But the point is, uh, this is a, if you want, this is a way of building infinity categories, how you build a lot of examples of infinity categories and then trying to, to yeah, use exactly. it because but, but we will, then we will just use coherent nerves or do we now we won't just use the coherent nerves but we will use some coherent nerves uh, uh, for example for the coherent nerves of well, okay i haven't defined the coherent nerve. I, i'm actually just about to define the coherent nerve so actually let me ask let let you ask myself the question ask me the question again in like 15 minutes uh, so if we have everyone has the terminology to to discuss what we're discussing yeah. Okay, so in fact, uh, I'm slightly cheating because I could do this definition for, for any poset P, in fact. In fact, I'm halfway tempted of, of giving it as an exercise, um, the next exercise sheet. But the trick is that every category can be built out of these brackets N. If you think about it, every category is just a bunch of objects, a bunch of compositions that are glued together in some way. Um, so in fact, this notion of homotopy coherent diagram is all that I need. And let me make this precise. So let C be a simplicial, well, a kind of rich category. But this works actually for any simplicial category, but uh, you get a, well, okay. 
we are mainly interested in it for kind enriched. Uh, the coherent nerve uh, C underline and delta C underline is the simplicial set brackets n goes to simplicial functors from this Cordier category C n to C underline. Uh, by the way, this 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 C actually I'm writing is the complex number, but it should actually relate to the fractor, the the black letter C. I just bad at right handwriting black letter, and it stands for Cordier, who is the guy who came up with this definition. This is stands for Cordier, just to give credit when the credit is due. Um, Okay, I haven't told you actually, I am slightly cheating because I haven't told you uh, what the simplicial maps are. But uh, that's the, the, the obvious choice. If you have a map from N to M, you actually get a functor, simplicial functor like this, sending I to FI and mapping like this by taking the image of f of a. So, yeah. Uh, well, you have to check that this actually makes sense, but uh, it does. I mean, this, this respects all the axioms that you, you it has to. So this is a simplicial set. So remember, this is sort of how you build the nerve of a category. Right? You take instead of n nuples of composable arrows, you take these n nuples of composable arrows plus also all coherence we can throw at them. And so let me give an example. So let's see just an ordinary category. Uh, you can see it as a, a canon rich category. by taking a map as just the home, as the constant simplicial sets at the set of morphemes. So there are no non-trivial homotopies. And then you can see that the homotopy coherent nerve is just a nerve because all coherences have to collapse and just be the same. But, we have, we do happen to have examples where homotopies are interesting. So let me define actually the notion we went so far. So let's I be a category and C underline a canon rich category. And I shaped coherent diagram, well, okay, let me say homotopy, coherent diagram, but many people me included tends to, to remove the homotopy because the word is, is long enough. And sometimes you just say diagram when the, the situation is clear, it is a map of simplicial sets from the nerve of I to the coherent nerve of C underline. And let me give an example. In this case, I'm going to take I the square and see what we get. We are getting something, you will see that we're getting somehow more data than the one we defined last semester, but not in an important way. Um, so remember, the nerve of I, which is just delta one times delta one, we saw as an example, you can see it as two, two simplices glued along the diagonal. Let's 
zero, 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 one, and zero, one, one. So a map and I to this coherent map of C on the line is just two factors, so two, two simplices, so two factors of this coinciding on C. Yeah, sorry. Oof. As the and this one is speaking the composition. This is speaking the this F zero two that we discussed. So concretely, what it means, i.e., we have x zero zero. We have one object for each object of this poset. So we have maps that I'm going just to call F G, F prime G prime. And I have a common map here, which I'm going to call R. And then I have two homotopies, H and K. So you can see it's basically the same amount of data as we did last semester. The only difference is that we are also choosing a particular diagonal map. In the topological case, you can think of it case, you can think of these as speaking R is H blank comma one half, the halfway map through the homotopy. Of course, that's a perfectly arbitrary choice. I'm just uh, choosing a homeomorphism of two simplices glued with the uh, with square, essentially. Yeah. Which, I mean, there are more than one way of doing that. This is one. Uh, but but hopefully this shows you that this notion recovers our classical notion. OK. So OK. So we finally managed to define a homotopy coherent diagram. Uh, hooray. Uh, uh, OK. Other questions? And hopefully you, you start seeing why I wanted to do simplicial sets because I don't know how to do this, this definition without the combinatorics of simplicial sets. So actually don't know uh, any reference that does it without using simplicial sets. So hopefully the time is not completely wasted. The time in the last two lectures was not completely wasted. Okay. But now I'm going to play another switcheroo. Uh, in that the fact that we are actually more interested in these coherent nerves that in the canary rich categories themselves on some level. Because if you think about it, M delta C underline knows all the interesting stuff. about C underline. And to, to give you as a first motivation, let me give an example. So an, an exercise actually. So we have a map from cat to simplicial sex, which is the nerve and is fully faithful. Uh, that is, uh, i.e., the set of functors from C to D is the same as home 
simply shall set from the nerve of C to the nerve of D. And uh, I'm not going to do that. I don't know. Did, did uh, Pavel do it? Uh, yeah. OK, good. So you can see that for ordinary categories, the nerve captures everything. Uh, and I'm going to claim that for Kennedy's categories, OK, this is not true anymore. The coherent nerve doesn't capture everything, but it captures everything up to homotopy. In fact, you have uh, that the, the, we could prove a theorem similar to the one I proved at the beginning of this, this lecture. So n delta, it's a remark. I'm not going to prove this because it would take us way too far afield. But n delta has a left adjoint. C, it's called a Cordier, uh, from simplicial sets to, uh, to uh, simplicial categories. And if C is can enriched, uh, this map. Uh, is what's called the dryer can equivalence. I.e. it is a homotopy equivalence Wait. Yeesh. Sorry. No, 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 it was right, it was right. Uh, on mapping spaces, and essentially surjective in a way that I haven't defined yet, but essentially every object is homotopy equivalent to an object in the image for a suitable notion of homotopy equivalence. Okay. So in a sense, this, this nerve remembers everything. And in fact, the, the, the whole point of this charade is that I'm going to want to work with this guy instead and see on the line from now on. So, And so let me actually also finish another thing because I asked for more questions. So simplicial sets of the form and delta C underline have a special property. For example, if you have an arrow, by which I mean a one simplex, f from y to from x to y, and another from y to z. You can find a two simplex sigma r representing their composition. And here you can just take R to be literally the composition in C underlined and the sigma, the constant homotopy. IE for every map from lambda to one to C underlined. Uh, you can find an extension f bar from delta two to this guy that C is the composition.
And this actually has, this is not true, for example, if you take lambda to zero, you can check it as an exercise. So it's not quite a can complex. But uh, let me give a definition then. A simplicial set C is an infinity category if uh, for every n greater or equal than two and i strictly between zero and n and every every map f from lambda and i into c extends to some f bar delta n into c so in the case n equals two and i equals one this gives you a notion of composition and for bigger n's uh, these give you we will but we won't see much but if you do this exercise Let's see the compatibility of the composition. And delta C underline is uh, an infinity category for every um, can enriched category C underline. And here it's very important it's can enriched, otherwise it is false. In the end, you're going to have to, to extend some maps from some sublicial sets into the mapping space, and you will have to use can complexes to do that. Okay. Okay, sorry for going a bit fast at the end here. Are there questions? And actually, let me put a different remark to say that this notion is not really more general than the notion of canary category in some sense, because if C is an infinity category. Uh, well, okay, I haven't defined an equivalence of infinity categories, but the same thing as before is actually true. Is an equivalence in some sense, in the appropriate sense. sense. So as before, as we've seen for can complexes and, and topological spaces, infinity categories are just a more easy to manipulate notion uh, than can enrich categories that contain pretty much the same information. In fact, it's kind of fun to look at the history of the subject. Uh, originally, people were working with essentially can enrich categories for a long time. Um, the, the notion of coherent diagrams actually goes back to the 70s. I was actually surprised by how old it is. Uh, you almost never hear about it until people start talking about modern approaches, but in fact, it's quite old. Uh, and all these definitions are actually quite old. Um, so it's very surprising uh, that people were trying to, to work this with explicitly with canon rich categories for so long. Uh, despite the, the having this definition in their hand for decades, literally. Uh, and, uh, but this definition actually simplifies the argument quite a lot. So that's what we're going to use. Um, and okay, let me give a bunch of examples that are going to be very important. Well, at least one example is very important. The infinity category space of spaces is the simplicial nerve of CAM. That's called infinity category 
of spaces, or if you follow Peter Schulze, people call them animas also. Um, but I'm going to, I'm old fashioned and I'm just going to use the word spaces. Animas is short for animated sets, in case you're curious. Uh, but in this course, I'm going to be old fashioned and just use the classical word spaces for it. Even if, uh, it, word of warning, this is very much not the same as the coherent nerve of top. It's a subcategory of that guy who corresponds to spaces with homotopy type of a CW complex. But that's what I'm going to do. And uh, okay. Uh, what else do you want to say for today? Yeah, let me ask you if you have questions actually. There is another definition I can give you like in two minutes, but before that, let me show that everyone is on board with this. Since it's possibly the first time you've seen this. And it might be a bit weird and surprising at first. Uh, but hopefully the motivation is clear, is to, to talk about these homotopy coherent diagrams in a very clean and simple way. Uh, I have a you... Oh. you first. Um, could you maybe um, explain again the main difference between Kahn and rich categories and infinity categories? Is it just that you have a weak composition in infinity categories and a strict composition of one morphism in, in rich categories? Yeah, I mean, there are two different models. Of course, the definition are quite different. A uh, kind of rich category is that you have a bunch of points, and for each pair of these points, you get a simplicial set, a Kahn complex, corresponding to the mapping space. Um, uh, an infinity category is just a single simplicial set that somehow package all this homotopical information in one simplicial set, whose points are now the objects of your category and whose one synthesis are the arrows and so on and so forth. Uh, we will see uh, next time, now I don't have time to do this, now how to get back the mapping spaces out of this data, but you will only get the mapping spaces up to homotopy equivalence. You want to get the actual simplicial sets. So in some sense, this is just compressing the information. And as you're right, as you said, you're right, the you don't get the composition on the nose as a map of simplicial sets. You will get a zigzag composition where you take the product, you get a complex that's equivalent to the product, and that maps down to, to, the, to, to, to the, the mapping space, that's a composition. And that's the price we pay for for working with this more compact model. Uh, as I like to say, this idea is like you have to embrace the weakness of your structures. You want to work with weak structure, but if you want to try to keep like half of them strict and half of them weak, uh, it tends us to be a lot harder than just say, okay, let's make everything weak and what the hell, we have to deal with it anyway. So that's the big advantage of infinity categories on some level. Okay. Thanks. There was a different, another person asking a question, I think. Yes, um, I wanted to ask um, when the, so, um, no, I wanted to ask if you can um, give some intuition what the homotopy coherent nerve of a um, Kahn rich category is. Is this uh, just like um, packing, packaging the, enriched category into a simplicial set, like um, shifting the simplicial set definition, uh, or is it what yeah, you it's, 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 That was what I wanted to say with these remarks here, that you don't actually don't lose information. It's just a more compact way of packaging uh, the, the data of a kind of enriched category. You, as you can see, you still have the same objects, you still have the same uh, morphism. You still have a notion of morphism. So, okay, I didn't say it, but okay, a morphism. So, an object in an infinity category is uh, just a zero simplex. And a morphism in an 
infinity category is a one simplex. And in fact, I'm going to give you, tell you a second what a homotopy is. And you see that it will recover exactly the notion of homotopy that we had before. So actually you don't lose information that the set of objects of uh, the coherent nerve of C underline is the same thing as the set of objects of C underline and the set of morphisms. So let me, I didn't define what they mean by the set of morphisms, but of course it's, it's clear. It's exactly that homomorphism, and it's a bit surprising, but also the set of homotopies is going to be the same set of homotopies. Of course, when you work with higher homotopies, you're going to start to lose redundancy. And if you have a lot of redundancy in the definition of C underline, we're going to start to, to compress it further and further. Uh, but this essentially is another way of packaging the information in a by forgetting the strictness. What we are forgetting, for example, is the strict multiplication. As I, as I said, and okay, this is I'm going to give be more precise next time about this. I don't have time now to define the multiplication, but uh, the multiplication will be defined only up to homotopy. But uh, but it's a trade-off you, you have to make to get a more compact model. And it turns out you don't actually care all that much about that information when you're trying to like do proofs and, and, and work with stuff. Turns out that's a trade-off well worth making. And it, this might be counterintuitive because it took people like 30 years to decide that uh, let's try to make it and see, and see what happens. Uh, but it turns out it's a good idea. So I don't know if, if that's an answer to the question. Um, yes. So uh, can one say that um, Khan and Rich categories are the are really this really have the same data are really the same uh, as infinity categories up to yes some homotopy? Yes. yes. Ah, okay. uh, it's this remark here, and in fact you can actually take the category of simplicial categories and invert what I, I called Dwyer can equivalences, which is, um, okay, I haven't defined them for a general simplicial category, but just said what they are for kind of rich categories. But, and you can take uh, uh, infinity categories, actually let me call them quasi categories, uh, when I think of them as a, uh, actually let's say infinity category, also have the name quasi category and uh, weak can complexes. I'm uh, using quasi category when I think of the one category of, of the simplicial sets. I want to resuffer in cat infinity for, for the things. And, and you invert the equivalence of these objects, which I haven't defined, but will be like functors going in one direction and the opposite direction and natural equivalences between their compositions and the identity. I just give time to define what natural equivalences are. Uh, and then these two, two categories are actually the same. So in this sense, up to homotopy, these two things are the same. So infinity categories or quasi-categories are just like um, streamlining the definitions. So to say, so yeah. Have some, I mean, it, have you lose a little bit. Sorry? No, no, go on. You, you lose a little bit in, in, in intuitiveness, perhaps, of the definition. I mean, this horn filling condition may be a bit surprising at first, even if it's clear that it encodes composition for N2, I1, but the higher ones take a while getting used to. Uh, I'm going to actually give a reformulation next time of this definition. Uh, that's possibly more intuitive. Uh, but, but what you gain is compactness in, in dealing with these things. And does uh, what what you uh, said before? Did I get it right that you also gain um, usability? Yeah, in the, in the end, it, they they are easier to manipulate in practice. I don't have actually a good uh, moral explanation of why this is the case. I can only tell you that you know you can try to to prove stuff in one with one model and prove stuff with the other model, and you will see that one of them is a lot less uh, painful to work with. Uh, I, again, I don't really have a moral explanation. It's just something that happens in practice. Uh, but for example, see the definition of coherent nerve uh, for, 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 for kind of rich categories needed me to define this, sorry, this definition of coherent diagram needed me to define uh, these, these Cordier categories. 
and uh, so well for 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 infinity categories it's just a map of simplicial sets from n i to c. Of course, you lose something. You lose the ability of talking about strict diagrams. But turns out that it's not that important in practice. As I say, trying to keep some strict things uh, and some weak things at the same time turns out to be a lot more hassle than it is actually worth it. Thank you. Uh, one small question uh, regarding um, the definition. Um, you just said that uh, these two things, can enrich categories and infinity categories, are up to homotopy equivalent, uh, essentially the same. Um, uh, can you maybe say something about uh, the fact that these, uh, for the coherent nerve, we take um, functors, simplicial functors, um, out of these Cordier um, Kahn enriched categories? This yeah, they're is, not Kahn uh, enriched, they're simplicial categories. Okay, uh, the simplicial categories. And there you said that um, one uh, would basically banish the need for um, weak unitality. No, I mean, uh, you, you could do a similar definition using weak unitality. Uh, what I actually meant is that you end up with an equivalent category yet again, if you ask just for weak unitality instead of strict unitality. And it turns out that it's convenient to have strict unitality. So, so um, do, or so are um, infinity categories then the like uh, simplicial certified version of Kahn enriched categories where one uh, already assumes strict unitality? I mean, you have strict unitality even in Kahn enriched categories. So at this point, essentially, what you're doing, you're relaxing the composition to get a, a weak composition, composition only up to homotopy. Yeah but you, you keep the strictness of the unitality. In uh, infinity categories. In infinity categories. And that's uh -huh. technically not required. You could do a similar theory with a similar definition with weak unitality. Uh, and people have done so, but it turns out that you don't gain much. Uh, in fact, you lose some, some convenience. Yeah, and and, and I, I'm sorry, I cannot really give a, a an explanation why this model is so much more convenient than all the others, uh, yes. but it is uh, yeah. in practice. Uh, a name for um, the things uh, would uh, one could uh, obtain when one does not like banish this uh, weak unitality. I mean, when you okay. do the same thing, does it have a name? Uh, so there is a slightly different model that's built using simplicial spaces instead of simplicial sets. Uh, that's, um, what's the name? I think uh, weak co complete Siegel spaces, something like that. Uh, but there are many, many models of these things. And uh, so I was, when I said a model with weak units, I was actually thinking of these things that are called weak complete Siegel spaces. Okay. Uh, but I'm sure there are others similar, more similar to quasi categories that I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Cool. Complete single space is another very useful model. It's actually the other model that's convenient to keep on the side to quasi categories and sometimes to switch from one to the other very occasionally. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about complete single spaces. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, other questions? Uh, yes, maybe now my, my question would be more accessible. Uh, okay. So I guess the, the, the point I was wondering was if we take, if we start with the simplicial and rich category to, to give actually a homotopy coherent diagram is way easier because you can just give it one categorical and then take the nerve. Am I right? Well, so no, because I mean, you have to you have to actually compute for this category i what the Cordier category is, the one that has all the coherences built in. And for a post it is actually doable. I, I plan to put it on the exercise uh, sheet what it happens for a post it. But for a general category, I actually 
I've tried to think about it. It's not not super easy. Uh, I think it's still doable, but I wouldn't bet that the answer I have in mind right now is correct. So I, I would actually disagree that it's easier to, to, to say that. Uh, okay. But then, then I'm, I'm a bit confused about the definition of the... So a uh, definition of a coherent diagram is a map like this, which is the same thing by the adjunction property as a map like this. Okay, then I did mistake by by, by writing it. Um, yeah, then then it's not then the the question is. Yeah. I I think it might be exactly spelled out what this guy is in the original paper by Cordier and Porter. I actually have to have a look if they give this example for a general category, uh, but it's not. I mean, again, I I think it is doable, but it's not very explicit at all. So. Of course, we like ninety percent of the diagrams we're going to use are going to be indexed by posets secretly, so yeah. <laughs> it's going to be simpler. But there would have been way way to reprise it. It's surprising, anyways. I guess. Sorry. If it would be that easy to give a homotopy Korean diagram, actually, that would be kind of surprising, maybe. Okay. Let me stop the recording.